Greetings, I am Solid Scully, and welcome back to Ratchet and Clank 3, up yours asshole. Quark, comic episode 2, Ariba Amoeba. A new evil was gathering in the shadowy swamps of Blackwater City. A horrific breed of monsters known as Amoeboids, born in the laboratories of a twisted scientist named Dr. Nefarious. To think, they called me insane, Lawrence. We'll see who's insane when my pets have exterminated all life on this miserable planet! Well, that should clear things right up, sir. When Captain Quark encountered the Amoeboids for the first time, he immediately executed emergency response plan number two. Hey, wait just a minute. Quark then proceeded to stall for time while he coordinated the city's defenses from the women's restroom at Galaxy Burg. Give me that thing, you lying no good. Oof. Right. Now, where were we? From the moment I touched down, I knew the situation called for a head-on assault. Without hesitation, I rushed to do heroic battle with the monstrous amoeboid horde. Hey there, kids. You want to play some video games? Hey, woo-woo-woo-woo-woo, yeah, woo. And now you can see the other reason where they reuse the assets of uh, Planet Rugar in the sense that they wanted to create the backdrop for this by using the stuff they had from Ratchet and Clank 1. You see, Insomniac is reliable at reusing their assets when they're on a crunch time. Uh, but yeah, basically this entire segment is dedicated to the Quark Vid comics, which is basically telling the origin story of... Uh, well, not necessarily Captain Quark. Like, uh, I think the only game that ever really delves into that is Size Matters. Uh, kind of. It's really more so the origin story of Dr. Nefarious, who, as you'll soon learn later, yeah, doesn't really like bioorganic creatures that much, and, uh, well, he was the one responsible for creating the Amoeboids in this episode of Arriba Amoeba. And, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I just kind of love the music of these fucking stages, because I guess in the effort to, like, ape games of the... 8 and 16 bit era, they just make this music just fucking video gamey as hell, so instead the music is all like boopy doopy boopy doopy boopy doopy boopy doopy. And it's, uh. <laughs> well, like, I mean, I'm simultaneously just sort of amused, um. I mean, like, not to say that you can't make good, like, um, 8 or 16 bit compositions, but that's generally what a lot of the sort of music sounds like. Like, I mean, it other sounds like. Uh, very generic, like you can't really do much with it with a lack of instrumentation. Or it just ends up being incredibly fucking ear grating because if I can make a bit of a confession here in regards to the, um, you know, in regards to the bloody Sega Game Gear or, uh, Master System or whatever, I honestly god can't stand the fucking sound chip of that thing. Like, it, it sounds so ear grating and whenever I listen to it, it makes me want to, uh, jump off from a tall building and die and turn into a giant pizza on the way down. No, uh, but I mean, as for the levels themselves, they're really nothing to scoff at, it's just basic 2D platforming. So, uh, nothing more, nothing less, really. I mean, the only real threat the Amoeboids pose is that they split apart and just sort of jump and bounce around, so... Nothing to worry about, get to the end. Again, you won't, uh, be facing off a boss at the end of all of these rounds, but... They can just get to the teleporter at the end, and that's that. I Actually, you only really fight two bosses. Uh, technically, three, if you count the... Um, the alternate stage one with Captain Darkstar, I think. Uh, yes. Indeedy. His amoeboid army defeated, Dr. Nefarious had no choice but to flee Blackwater City in disgrace. You've not seen the last of me! I will have my vengeance if it takes a thousand years! <laughs> Dr. Nefarious was right about one thing. He and Quark would meet again, and sooner than he realized. For a true hero like Captain Quark will stop at nothing in the name of justice. <coughs> what? I held my breath! Episode 3, Shadow of the Robot. For six days, Captain Quark clung to the ship like the dung of a giant green space bird. Finally, the ship arrived at its destination. A secret robotic laboratory on planet Magmos. Drawing on his mastery of the ancient art of disguise, Quark slipped into the laboratory completely undetected. Somebody... 
Somebody order a pizza? Quark's plan was flawless. But unbeknownst to our hero, his every move was being watched. The famous Captain Quark couldn't possibly be this stupid. Could he? Even drooling imbeciles can achieve success in certain fields, sir. Mad science, for example. Shall I have him annihilated, then? Let him come to us. I'll have a special surprise waiting for him. <laughs> And as we're seeing here, Dr. Nefarious also used to be a human, but uh, what happened to him to become a robot? Well, we'll just have to find out at the end of this very Geonosis-looking level. Uh, to talk a little bit more about these levels, in slight depth anyway, would be uh, the skill points related to this one. And again, in typical video game tradition, you basically gotta get to the end of the stage before a certain time threshold, and uh, can I just say, th these really will test your fucking... Uh, speedrunning instincts, because the time limits to get the skill points for these are really fucking tight and, uh, pain in my ass. So, I mean, the only thing I could really recommend is to uh, just start, make like, hell yeah, and start alcoholing ass! Uh, but, uh, whatever. He also, he also has nefarious trash talking to you all throughout the levels, so, uh, yeah, whatever. There was a point I was initially gonna make, but, uh, I forgot what it was. Ah, well, it's not important. Yeah, but I mean, that's... Hmm. As, as, you, the tire things are pretty much gonna be your only real hazards and anything that slows you down, really. Apart from that... Like, I mean, I will say that, that Stage 3 of the Quark Vid comics are, are, are a step up in difficulty, but... Again, like, I mean, all of these are pretty cruisy when you play them for yourself, so... You shouldn't really be going through too much difficulty. And again, these robots are just... pish. Look at them, they're not even doing anything, they're not preemptively attacking Quark, they're not reacting appropriately, and again, you also have thresholds of tokens, so you know, you can collect ten of them and, uh, you know, get your platinum bolt that way. But again, that's not something you're going to be focusing on when you're trying to get your, you know, uh, skill point. Now, that being said, though, like, I mean, it does add to uh, a bigger bolt threshold, so again, if you want to get paid more, then, uh, well, Bob's your uncle. Also, there's a giant Quark on the TV screen. I know I mentioned it before, but I mean, again, like, I mean, if video game consoles paid you for uh, simply the act of playing... Uh, I want that to be the reality, man, but nobody would ever work again. It's over, Nefarious. Never! I am the greatest genius the galaxy has ever known! You're no match for the likes of me! <laughs> That's rich! I used to beat up geeks like you in high school! I'll bet your prom date came in a box that said batteries not included! Say, come to think of it, we've met before, haven't we? No! Uh, uh, no, of course not. Mr. Bozell's ninth grade biology class! Uh. I always hated biology! That's right, you were that freak with the headgear! Remember how I used to clean the chalkboard with your pants? <laughs> While you were still wearing them? Oh, good times. You were three times my size, you stupid old! I was always big for my age. You were 26! Say, how about a wedgie for old times' sake? I think it's safe to say we've seen the last of Dr. Nefarious. Time to celebrate another job well done. But the danger was far from over. For in defeating one menace to the galaxy, Quark had created another, even more terrifying evil. Episode 4. Deja Q. All over again. After defeating Dr. Nefarious on planet Magmos, Quark returned to his condo in Metropolis for some well-earned R&R. Oh, Lance, it's time you knew the truth. The baby isn't yours. What? Who? Who is the father? Oh, your evil twin brother, Engelbert. But, Janice, I am Engelbert. Ooh, must be that pizza I ordered. Guten Tag, Captain Flabby. Uh, Helga, what are you doing here? Getting you off your lazy butt! You have plumped up like a giant green bratwurst! <laughs> it is time for the fitness course! Oh, oh, all right. Meanwhile, on a rooftop high above the bustling streets of Metropolis... 
The hour of my vengeance is at hand. Go now, my robotic servants. Tear this city apart. Bring me the head of Captain Quark! <laughs> And so we learn the origins of uh, not only how uh, Captain Quark's big victory comeback was achieved, but also Dr. Nefarious's origins as a bullied nerd who uses his uh, robot support thing. Uh, by the way, that's a bit of a, you know, speedrunning trick. Again, you can't see the bottom, but unlike games of yore, uh, you don't automatically die if you're, you know, due to like screen crunch or limitations or whatever. Again, if you know where to jump, then uh, you can actually get through this pretty quickly, but you gotta be really fucking precise about that, because otherwise, uh, you can quite easily fall to your death. It's only through years of playing that you'll, uh, know how to do it. Anyway, I was always talking about Dr. Nefarious. Yeah, his, uh, robot liberation thing seems to be a little bit bullshit, because, uh, he was a geeky nerd who hated biology, and, uh, hmm. Like, I mean, I think I might have said this before, but I mean, could you get away with this parodial subtext in today's generation? Or would it perhaps be, uh, somewhat more relevant? Who knows? I'd imagine not, but, you know, the way people take things out of context in recent years is, of course, always a bitch to deal with. I will say that in terms of, uh, the big comic levels, the Metropolis one is actually one that kind of starts and stops, which, uh, can kind of uh, kill your speedrunning experience if you want to get the skill point. Again, if you know a few tricks and traps to use, then you can uh, make your journey easier or more difficult, depending on how skilled you are at the 2D platforming goodness, but... It's mainly with, um, stuff like this. You have hives of those little bug things that constantly try and slow you down. Especially with the, uh, yeah, the creatures here. When they try and fly high up in the air, they'll disassemble and, you know, basically just behave like that. Well, they'll be out of your, like, grenade launcher's reach and they just don't pop down until they have to recharge their laser abilities. Uh, I wish I had some trivia to discuss about this, but there really isn't much at all with Quark's stuff besides what I've already mentioned. Uh, I mean, I suppose... I guess to maybe uh, talk about Captain Quark himself, like, I mean... Uh, for as much as the washed-out superhero he was we saw in, like, Ratchet and Clank 1 and all that... I guess maybe this year is... And again, I'm, I'm sure the legends are somewhat embellished, as we heard during the narrator segments, but... Uh, like, I mean, I'm guessing Quark was at least somewhat competent during his heyday. Like, I mean, the games do portray him as, like, this, you know, commercialist, you know, out-of-touch superhero, but... I don't know, I gotta assume he was at least somewhat, uh, willing to save the galaxy at the cost of getting paid. I guess, like, uh, kind of in a similar vein to, like, Booster Gold or something, if we could use a, uh, like, a more mainstream superhero kind of thing. Uh, whatever, I can't really say for certain what Quark was like in the days of yore, but... According to Size Matters, he did come from a superhero family line, so I guess maybe it ran in the family? Uh, but then again, I haven't played Size Matters in years, and I kind of don't want to, because uh, Size Matters is bad. Then again, that might just be because of my first experience with the game, because, like, I mean, I picked it up back in 2007, because... Again, bear in mind, this was before I got a PS3, and back when the PS3 was, you know, out and free, and there was uh, Tools of Destruction already out at that point. And, you know, I was really bummed out at that point because I couldn't get the game, but it's like, oh wow, Ratchet on PS2, I I've never heard of this game before, Size Matters? This game's gonna be good, I really gotta play this, and I was disappointed to find out it was made by High Impact Games, which uh, didn't make it very good, and uh, it sucked. It's like a bootleg title, pretty much. <laughs> oh my fucking god, who can- well, I know who composed this, but Jesus Christ, <laughs> this is the most video gamey shit I've ever fucking seen! <laughs> Oh my god, I can't, I can't fucking deal with this. Oh, genius music. Uh, but yeah, in terms of how you fight Dr. Nefarious, okay, you avoid his fire pillars, you you can um, shoot him with the bombs if you want to be more careful, uh, just learn how to dodge out the way of him, and um, uh, just punch his lights out, which you can do similar to what you did with the, um, uh, like the space eel. Uh, boss fight. Uh, avoid the giant uh, puff of smoke or whatever the fuck it is. And uh, yeah, you can also abuse your <laughs> invincibility frames uh, to get at him. Uh, if you want to play this safely, I recommend wall jumping more than anything else, because, you know, it's how you can avoid his like little uh, raspberry jam shower of death. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So, uh, that's pretty much the end of the Quark Vig comic series. Or is it? 
Oh, we'll just have to find out next time, but on that note, I am Solar Scully, keep it new metal, and next time on Ratchet & Clank 3, up yours asshole, we'll be getting back to the game good and proper. Catch you next time. Quark! I'll get you for this. Sorry, what's that, Stumpy? This isn't over, Quark. I swear, I will return someday to destroy you and bring Metropolis to its knees! Uh-huh. Just a word of advice, Nefarious. Quit while you're ahead. And so Quark believed that the threat posed to the galaxy had been ended forever. But... Uh, seems the script is missing a few pages. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks, Professor. I'll take it from here. And so ends the greatest tale of courage and heroism ever told. The true story of Captain Quark's triumph over the nefarious supervillain known as, uh, well, Dr. Nefarious. <laughs>